what's up guys Tristan X with Squadron Velfar Drone Squadron and Gamers R Us doing well it's been a long time since I've actually done a video recording or a screen recording of uh, games that I play as as well so I figured I would start with playing with one of my all-time beloved favorite games online MMO or MMOs Excuse me, I'm a little nervous today. <laughs> Granado Espada. So we'll log right into it and let's jump right on board. So I chose to choose this game as my game that I want to talk about a little bit just because I've been actually on this game since its alpha beta test when I was stationed in Japan late 2005, early 2006 before it went um, actual free to play uh, back in yeah late 2006 if I remember but I actually got invited to play the game in its alpha stage back late 2005 and then uh, went and did a couple beta tests in early 2006 and then when I left the Navy in 2000 late 2006 December 2006 I actually uh, hooked up with one of my old one of my old friends that I mean we've been friends actually now it's uh, the 20 year anniversary uh, Eric yeah <clears throat> and I saw him playing this game back in spring of 2007 and I was like oh shoot I remember that game and then ever since then I got into it and or I got back into playing the game and I never, well, I don't want to, I almost said gave up on it completely when I had some issues with it nine, yeah, about nearly nine months ago um, when I started noticing uh, like update issues with the game every time it did its weekly updates and what I did not like about it was the fact that it actually went through Steam and you know at first I was happy about it I, I remember back in I think it was 2014 when or 2013 uh, when Steam uh, Steam gave the green light it was either 2013 or 2014 but at the same time or prior to it going green light on Steam T3 Fun the publisher actually picked up on the game and what was it? Uh, they took the rights to, <coughs> excuse me, took the rights to um, publish the game and make it available to North American players and and European as well too, and actually believe it or not, South American, uh, Latin America players as well too. So it's got a a larger fan base down in the South American countries, uh, not so much of a player base here in the United States I mean I know there's a lot that I've met but it's not well known through like social media platforms unless you type in the game Granado Espada on the Facebook search then you'll find several groups in there but you'll come to find that there's several iterations of Granado Espada that are published by other publishers as well too so with all that being said now, just a few, about, about a week and a half ago, I finally figured out, I was like, why don't I just not, why don't I just download the game through the T3 Fun uh, website and play the game from there without any hindrance from Steam itself. So I uninstalled it from Steam, started from scratch, downloaded all seven of the links on the game, and then, voila. Surely enough, now it actually works. I'm like, at first I thought it was just like it was a Windows 10 issue, like I I don't know. I mean, and then there was something about a read text dot txt file that, or redistributable file that has all the list updates from the server to uh, get the files from when you do the do the updates, and then that wasn't 
the issue apparently so I said you know what I'm gonna go start from scratch I mean it took me nine months just to even figure out why I mean well why biggest reason why it took me nine months is because uh, after like the first few weeks of trying to fix the problem and the issue I was like all right forget this I'm not gonna go in I'm not gonna go ahead and wrap my head around the issue and I don't know why I did not think about it at the time just to simply straight download it from the T3 fund website at all so just to show you what I'm talking about real quick about the T3 funds website where you can actually download the game without any issues whatsoever from Steam show you right here website and just go to the download section game download boom this part right here where it has part one through seven that's where you download it from so instead of downloading the full like it's about roughly seven to eight and a half gigs large or I'm sorry 10.9 gigs large you download it in segments of uh, 1.9 gigs a piece all the way up until part 7 which is a smaller file which is about roughly I, I think just a couple megs huge which is the I contains the X dot exe file the executable file to uh, do the the base install once you do the base install BAM boom you're ready to go uh, to update and based on this version build yeah, it's it takes a while to update. I mean, I just got recently a brand new uh, internet home service here uh, set up. If you try to do it on a, all right, I'm gonna take it all the way back since like 128 kilobytes per second, 256 kilobytes per second days, where it is gonna take you a heck of a long time. I mean. It, and that's just the minimum requirements to even play the game. All right, so yeah, it took me, based on my connection here, it took me about roughly two hours to do the full update. I mean, it was it was huge, it was huge. But sometimes, you know, just because you may have the fastest internet in the world, it all depends on like where it's pulling from on the servers. And then, yeah. If the servers aren't aren't like jiving well with everybody else who's trying to download it from I me, mean, it depends on what time of day you do it. But nevertheless, it'll get downloaded. I mean, if you have at least a good, if, if you're pushing like a uh, a dedicated hundred megabits uh, down download uh, speed to your computer, yeah, you, you should be you should be solid within less than an hour. I mean, I have my I have my uh, internet service kind of chopped up here at my house, so uh, I mean, we got a lot of um, equipment and stuff that I have to uh, to share along. So what I'm using for my game scheme recording, instead of having to pay from places like back in the days when I used to use XSplit back in 2014, when I actually got into uh, Ga video game vlogging in general and doing screen screen captures I am using um, NVIDIA's uh, NVIDIA's uh, onboard uh, game screen capture plus uh, recording service so and I'm hoping I mean it's been a long time since I even used this but I, I just didn't want to you know spend the X amount of dollars per month to subscribe to it but there was a one-time deal I'm not sure if it's happening anymore but XSplit had a one-time deal of $45 and then you have like a limited subscription uh, to the service itself but the only thing I I could say that I don't like about this so far is that I can't actually um, what you call it I can't move my camera screen around see how I have my cursor over the uh, 
the, the camera screen section, yeah. I can't, um, I can't, uh, move the, uh, the camera. But what I can do is I, I could move it into different quadrants. So, quadrant one, quadrant two, and three, and then four. So, any of the four corners. So, I figured with this one, it, it would be best if I could, unless, nope, I can't do that either. So, uh, that sucks. Well, well, I'll learn as I go along with this uh, over time. So, what I've been doing since the past nine months of being away from this game as well, too, of, like, for those of you know, that know me, I've been always, uh, always been flying my drones, especially, and I've been very big on aerial cinematics, especially, so, aerial cinematography, and then also getting back into my art of photography as well, too, so, it's just... Several months ago, I recently purchased a Sony a6000 2014's like You know entry-level pro prosumer level camera You know so and I, I really actually dig that camera All right, so what I'm doing right now is I'm actually in the global market or the money market what it used to be called uh, back in the days And just checking to see what's there on the market right now, and I can't Unless if I move this screen up here, so I have my how much this I have two hundred fifty-five million. I mean that's nickels and dimes in comparison to some of the other hardcore players here. But at one point I did actually manage to raise all my primary account, which is playing right now itself on my gaming laptop. I actually managed to pull within three days of like selling like premium premium items and other gear. I managed to pull 6.8 billion at one point in less than three days. And I was like, very happy about that. So let's see what characters they have here. Okay, so the fun part about, or what I actually like about Granado Espada as a whole is primarily three things. One, uh, the game theme and style, the artistic style. It kind of has that pirate-esque Victorian Renaissance feel to it with like Spanish 1500s like Inquisition I mean the, even the architecture itself is just uh, well, amazing for its time I mean it, it the, the, the artists behind behind in the creation of this game they really took the time to look at some of the uh, more older towns and cities of like places like Spain which by the way I did not know exists until a few years ago when I actually did some research on it so one of the main cities here in this game is called Coimbra C-O-I-M-B-R-A I don't know if I'm pronouncing it quite Coimbra Coimbra I, I don't know if there's any other way to pronounce it but it's actually based in a city in I believe it's Portugal if not Spain itself uh, I could always do a Google search real quick Coimbra it's a city in Portugal. Yeah, so it's a city in Portugal, and they really looked at a lot of the um, the, the cityscape and the environment around it, and it actually, in the game itself, it actually looks pretty dang good. Um, we're going to go visit that in a moment, but for now, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to see what's available in character sales. And if I don't have the money to get whatever character, if I'm looking for some of the characters I want, uh, I could always just get onto my primary character account. And, yeah, my primary account and uh, let's see what they have. So I have all these characters here, and they're all they all reside in my primary account. As always, they kind of sort of upsell the value of the characters. Like, for example, Hermes, which she was introduced back in 20, 2015, 2016-ish, if I remember. Yeah. I mean, she, she's a notable sniper, and I actually have that character already on my... on my alternate account that I'm playing right now so we're gonna go back here real quick and take a look Hermes, Hermes. 
Yep, there she is. Well, I named actually uh, after a person I know. Then we're going to go back here. Yeah, so for those that I ex actually explained about my love for this game, um, a lot of people I've been telling about this game, I have a lot of the characters on here named after people I actually know, family members and friends as well. So it's about 75, nearly 80% of all the characters that I have between my, my alternate account and then my primary account that I'm having playing right now actually are based on real life names or I have like a, a shorthand name version of it but it's a representation of a friend or family member I know personally so just to give you an example of the difference between the kind of characters that you come across in this game but majority of the characters that are in this game you actually have to either purchase or earn through quest but for me I've actually bought most of these characters uh, very few uh, in between that I've actually uh, I've actually earned through quests because the quests in this game can be very long winded some are short and some are like wow it, your, your characters have to be in tune or like tuned up pretty good in order to handle uh, the different boss fights uh, that you're going to encounter so this character in particular has um, her primary stance is uh, she's like actually more of a sniper specialist and uh, what is it man it's been a while so you, she uses what they call a large caliber rifle so for us it's actually a sniper rifle so in order to see her what she looks like when she sports it we're gonna go To uh, let's go meet up with some of my uh, characters on my alternate account. There she is. She's holding like some sort of big elongated sniper rifle with a bipod. I mean, she's very slow, but if tuned just right, her shots can be very or single single shots can be extremely powerful extremely 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 powerful and then one other character I want to focus on for a little bit is this dude right here who I like to call the Alucard of the Granado Spada series uh, whose name his character name is Linden and it's I renamed the character after me who's this is happens to be one of my personal favorite characters in the game along with a few other ones that I named after myself but this character in particular uh, has a stance where you can actually summon a grim reaper so I don't even remember the backstory behind this uh, character in terms of uh, where he fits into this whole entire uh, storyline of Granado Espada I just remember there was a uh, a quest line that you do where you enter the land of the dead and then when you complete that uh, depending on who you choose there's two primary characters you could choose from and one of them I believe it's Linden the character that I'm using right now who actually uh, I guess is sort of the bad guy I, I, I don't remember but uh, I don't want to get too much more into it. But the character look itself, uh, that's what I'm more interested in. It's like It reminds me so much of Alucard. Except it's battle stance. Um, in this case, he gets to wield a saber-like weapon and a pistol. The real-life Alucard from the Castlevania series never sported a pistol at all. It's all about swords and magic-based uh, magic spells, per se. Well, he, on the other hand, he has a summon as well, too. I don't know if I actually have the book. Or it just gives him the Grim Reaper power. 
Oh, it gives him the gr Yeah, okay. So, this one, uh, with the Black Reaper uh, skill, uh, skill cast, uh, it actually uh, boosts his attack, but it drops his uh, maximum HP for a little bit. But his recovery for HP is actually pretty dang good. <laughs> Covers HP by 10% and SP by 30%. Uh, what's the duration on this spell? Oh, it takes 1.5 seconds to cast. But oh, okay. So the cooldown is 80 seconds. So for about the next 80 se seconds from the moment of ca uh, casting this, uh, he has that. Um, he has that buff. So, so some other characters here that I have on my primary account. So we're actually in the same zone or area where my primary account is uh, what's called farming or mining for loot. So these monsters drop off all this stuff. Uh, some of them are just consumable items that are just for then and there. And then at the same time, stuff like this pure quartz and other stuff it's just miscellaneous loot that could be sold and turned around over to uh, NPC characters where they will just buy your stuff back so this is one of the primary ways where I earn my money by just having and now how they're gathering without me having the characters actually gather the care uh, gather the loot um, I have these pets that are here on the floor or on the ground that are actually picking it up by themselves. Or I could just simply have my characters, while I'm active in the game, go ahead and just pick up the loot uh, themselves. And then I can go back into auto fighting. So there used to be this big debate back years and years ago about using pets that actually do uh, auto gathering, and some people are saying, "Oh, you're just botting, botting." Really, it's not really botting, in my opinion. I mean, it's just a it's a set script in the game that allows the the pet to do whatever it's designed to do. I mean, if you're talking about botting and purposes for hacking, yeah, this is not even nor even nearly close to hacking. Otherwise, why would the game developers and the publishers allow this to even happen? So for them to say, oh, you're just botting, you know, okay. Or you're just, or maybe the people back in the days when they say you're botting, that you're actually just not even behind, you're AFK, you're away from the keyboard, and you're allowing your characters to just autonomously do this. But see, this is one of the beauty parts about the game, is that when you're away from it, away from the keyboard, let's say you're, you know, at a friend or family, uh, family gathering or something or you're at a party or whatever and then you just let your account go and then turn your screen off on your game so you don't you know drain the battery on your screen or drain the battery on your screen um you know consume more power than you need to you just let your machine go and then just turn your tv off or your monitor off and then boom and i've been doing this for years on end and it's like a non-stop like farm fest of like trying to raise as much money as I can so there's this is like probably the easiest but the most long winded way to earn money in the game and then the other way is like when you purchase uh, stuff on their website you know the premium item stuff some of the stuff that you get in the uh, I have to explain it to you by going to the website itself So, in the web, the Granado Spot of T3 Fun website, you can actually go to the shop section and then go to Lucky Shop. And then go to character selection. So, this is how you get some of the new premium item characters uh, that aren't available on. Well, what the? 
that aren't available through the quest lines in the game, but they're purchasable. Okay, why can I not go on this page? the web shop so there's the lucky shop and then the web shop so the lucky shop actually allows you to uh, all right come on don't be a don't be an ass lucky shop and if I can't go on this again then I'll just talk about it another time so many tabs here, it's not even funny anymore. Oh, maybe that's just it. Okay, one more time. One more time. One more time. Alright, that is straight up odd. Okay, we'll revisit that another time or maybe on another video. Okay, but basically, if you go to that section right there that I just showed you on, on, the, on the website, you can actually purchase characters there too, but it's out of random. So when I see when I say out of random, you can't buy just the characters outright. So what it is is it's on a, a kind of like a roulette randomized system where it actually uh, let's say you purchase 10, 10, uh, 10, um, I forget what to call it, but basically either you could go one at a time and then it's a randomized choice. So you first select the character that you intend to get and then afterwards you you spend the amount of T-Coins. So it's like 490 T-Coins per one and then it'll just randomly generate. Uh, you can either get like growth stones or other items or even the character itself but it's all randomized but I always buy in bulk of 10 so I, I can open up 10 at once and then hopefully one of those 10 cards is actually the character card itself that I'm, I'm gunning for and with me doing that for years on end it's like the the miscellaneous premium item stuff that I get, I turn it around and I sell some of that back into the uh, into the money market, or I forget what they call it now, but you just saw earlier in the video here, uh, they called it something other than money market, but for all intents and purposes, I always call it the money market, just because that's how I remember it being since back in the old, day, uh, old days of Granado Spot itself. So, with that being said, uh, this is pretty much the game itself. Oh, I did promise you guys that I would show you one of the places here in the game that's actually a representation of a real-life city in Portugal, Coimbra. So, looking at the architecture alone, it's actually a good representation of where the artists got their inspiration from. looking at this uh, more Spanish Latin-esque uh, type of architecture I mean for 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 its time this game is actually graphically looks I mean even still to this day it looks graphically good uh, the details behind it I mean in today's standards for people who are so blessed with playing games like uh, what's a good notable game uh, that that's graphic intensive uh, you guys share it to me out there in comparison to uh, a game like this in comparison to more graphic intensive game where there's just so much more full detail uh, it, from an artist standpoint yeah we can see all, a lot of the uh, the primitive uh, primitive shapes and and um, the polygon count of the uh, of the buildings and even the characters themselves but then yet at the same time though a game like this I, I think it has a real heavy artistic value behind it and that's one of the 
main reasons is that that I'm drawn to this game so much. Oh, so I did men I mentioned I would also talk about like you know the three points that drawn drew me to this game. So first I talked about like the time frame this game takes place in, or the the type the theme based on real world you know real world like uh, uh, era like the Victorian era renaissance age of piracy or you know the pirates are Métis and then the um, what else uh, far in between anywhere between the 1500s to the late 1800 ish um, the different fashion designs oh and that's another thing which eludes me to number two um, the fashion part but I'll talk about that in a second so yeah it's, a, it's like a good conglomeration of all this uh, type of themes as well too where I, I think the artists have done a, an excellent job I mean most MMOs I've played in the past are usually based off of some like high-end fantasy-ish type game where swords and armors i mean i'm not saying there's anything wrong with it i mean i like that kind of stuff but this is one of those first games where it broke away from that quote-unquote stereotype of uh fantasy mmos where it it just it, it totally blew my mind when i first saw the concepts on this game um and then about back in 2014 2015 i uh, 2014 I'm sorry 2014 I actually bought the the art of Granado Espada which is a very very beautiful book and it shows like the the artistic process of how this game was developed in terms of like how to present the world to the players and I think they did an excellent job okay so with that being said number two the fashion in this game Holy crap! Before I even get into like like see how this uh, player has like wings like these angelic kind of like looking wings on their characters, man. The fashion sense itself. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Like how detailed the fashion is in this game. Okay. You had the five base characters, which are obviously free when you get it. You have the musketeer the wizard the fighter and the scout and the elementalist did i say that all yeah musketeer elementalist scout fighter and wizard okay and there's male and female versions of all the five base generic characters and that within themselves is they actually have like a wide array of uh fashion or, or co costumes to uh, to put onto the characters both male and female and then you have what's called the unique playable characters UPCs for short where they have their own base uh, uh, costume like so I'm gonna use uh, this character Lyndon for example by default this is the character's original look Oh, I'm sorry, not... Yeah, Kurt Linden is his full name. Kurt Linden. Yeah, Kurt Linden. And then you have... The other types of uh, costumes that... That you could possibly get for the game. Oh my gosh, I want to get that one now. Lord of Death's costume? Oh, let's see if that's even available. But yeah. So the unique playable characters, most of them have like a few other alternate type uh, costumes. And at the same time, uh, some just only have one for now, but later on they're going to always have additions to it. And the third thing I actually liked about this game is the fact that, yeah, first of all, it's free, but if you want to really, you know, get some of the, I mean, now this is more talking like, you know, you know, there's the pros and cons in there again. I'm talking more about the cons in the game where, unfortunately, like, if you want some of the really good high-end stuff or the characters themselves, I mean, you're going to have to kind of dish out some money. And <laughs> I mean, I didn't acquire all of this within just a span of weeks. It took years and years and years and years to even acquire this. I remember back since 2008 when they first started doing a lot of the uh, 
purchasable purchasable item stuff that you can get in the game where you can start to even acquire uh, UPCs, the unique playable characters. Um, yeah, you're going to be spending some money on this game just to even get like some of the really good stuff. But the big... The other big selling point about this game is uh, the fact that you can control up to three characters at a time, which is a rarity. It kind of follows the, uh, if you guys remember, Secret of Mana, Secret of Evermore games back of you know in the 90s, and you know 16-bit pixelated graphics. Yay. Uh, the the idea of what they call MMC massive multi character or mcc multi character control that's what it's called yeah multi character control where you can actually have three characters under your control at once and i don't know how long i've been on this uh doing this video now but shoot <laughs> high speed internet now so I'm just gonna upload the whole entire thing unedited unscrubbed you know to my uh, YouTube channel uh, for those who don't know who my YouTube channel is uh, it's actually shoot I don't even remember myself <laughs> I'm bad I'm bad it's just Tristan Malley T-R-I-S-T-A-N space M-A-L-I-G and just look me up. I think there's like two other Tristan or three other Tristan Malleys out there and whatever. But I will put the link uh, down here below on, the, on this uh, video throughout the whole way through. And then uh, you can also add me as a friend on Facebook. I'll put the, uh, the link as well too on there. And uh, yeah, so with that being said, yeah. The third and last part about what I liked about this game, like I said before, is the MCC, the multi-character control system. It's just unbelievable. I've, there hasn't been any other game since then. I mean, I think there is a few others. I don't remember, but even if I came across it, I probably just never got into it because, I don't know, I was just so dazzled by this game alone, and I just totally... All right, thanks for watching, guys. Um, and I will be doing a lot more of these videos now since I'm now trying to get back into the habit of doing like uh, not the not the game streaming uh, end of it. I, 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 there's just so many people out there who do a lot of game streaming. I'd rather just do like an actual like screen recording video and and do a lot more of these uh, more often. I mean, if you guys want, if you want me to stream, I will stream at some point if I can get enough people to like get me to get super psyched about wanting to get into uh, streaming. But yeah, there's just so many out there. I think it's just so super uh, saturated right now. The, 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 it, it's flooded out there. I mean, you got so many Twitch streamers and streamers in general and blah, blah, blah. I mean, we're, we're bombarded with uh, apps like Snapchat and Instagram and Facebook where you're just like, you know, say, hey, look at me, blah, blah, blah. I mean, like, you know, you got, it's going to take a lot for me to even just to follow you. I mean, you got to give me a good reason why. I mean, I mean, I get it. There's a lot of people out there and, you know, everybody wants their 15 minutes of fame. I think I'm just going for more of the approach of like I would like to be known but the content that I put out is like it may not appeal to the masses but with the friends and family out there you know they, they've talked to me about it and they actually kind of like the content that I've been putting out on my YouTube channel since 2017 especially with the drone flying in particular but this is another venue that I'm going to get back into which is uh game screen recording so I'd rather go that route for now until I get enough of a quote unquote fan base of people who want me to start streaming alright this is Tristan X I'll see you guys on the next video laters